One of the best things about analysing films is that after a while you tend to notice that your favourite directors have certain signatures that they like to include, like Hitchcock's long takes or Tarantino's extended dialogues openings or Baz Luhrmann's inability to hold a shot for more than five f***ing seconds. But what about the directors with less obvious film characteristics? Well, you've read the title, you've clicked on the link, you know where this is heading. With this in mind, I'm Jules, your Southwest Silver Screen star, and these are eight famous movie directors with trademarks you probably never noticed. Number eight, M. Night Shyamalan really likes using car accidents as a plot device. We all know that Shyamalan loves his late game twist, but did you know that he also loves a good car wreckage? He uses car accidents as plot devices in a lot of his films, and good examples can be found in The Sixth Sense, Signs, and Unbreakable. It's an easy vehicle, ha ha ha, to provide instant emotion from a scene, is an effective jump moment, and is also a good metaphor for his career around the time of the Avatar film. Number seven, Steven Spielberg has a soft spot for shooting stars. We all know Steven Spielberg for a few well-renowned trademarks, single parents, emotional scores by his long-term collaborator John Williams, and characters looking at things with dumbfounded awe. But he also loves shooting stars. Rumour has it that this all stems from when one of the crew members captured a shooting star on the set of Jaws, and he loved it so much that he put it in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Saving Private Ryan, and even Tintin. Number six, Richard Donner prefers his women to fall from great heights. I mean, this is a bit weird, but it seems like Richard Donner loves women falling from things. In The Omen, Superman, and Lethal Weapon, women plummet to their deaths or Superman rescue scenes, and it's all just a bit odd. I've got nothing more to say on this other than I wonder whether it's been raised with him or whether it's a subconscious thing. Number five, Joss Whedon likes bare feet just as much as Quentin Tarantino. So Tarantino loves a bit of bare feet in his films, but he's not the only one as Joss Whedon explores a foot fetish just as much in his flicks. But not stinky man feet, no, 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 only women can be barefoot in the house of Joss. Firefly and Dollhouse have tons of naked toes and Paltrow's pair can be seen slapping about on the deck of Avengers. Gross. Number four, John Glenn got a kick out of scaring Bond with animals. John Glenn gave us some of the campiest and therefore best Bond films, and while the 007 license is pretty much based on treading the same formula of big baddies, beautiful babes, and gadgets, he also added in lots of animals. In every Bond movie directed by Glenn, he includes a scene where Bond is spooked suddenly by an animal. In For Your Eyes Only, birds fly out of the cracks as Bond is climbing. In Octopussy, a tiger leaps out and frightens him. In View to a Kill, it's the classic cat scare as Bond climbs a stairway. In The Living Daylight, some monkeys scream at Bond in Gibraltar. And in License to Kill, we're back to pigeons again. What a legacy. Number three, Stanley Kubrick enjoyed bad stuff happening in bathrooms. Trying to work out how many trademarks there are inherent to Stanley Kubrick's filmography is like trying to stop John Glenn from including animals in his Bond movies. Totally impossible. One that you might not have picked up on though, Bathrooms. Kubrick really had a thing about bad things happening in bathrooms, which brings back memories of that grim suicide in Full Metal Jacket, various scenes in The Shining and that naked lady, or that scene in Lolita where Humbert Humbert finds out Lolita's mother has died and he's in the bath at the time. Number two, Sidney Lumet liked his movies shot in confined locations. Sidney Lumet is considered to be one of the greatest all-time movie directors, a man whose pictures were crafted with unrivaled mastery, and many of which were famously set in a single or confined location. Lumet was the guy who made 12 Angry Men, which takes place in one room for the sum of 90 minutes and explodes off the screen with all the tension and claustrophobia you might associate with being a juror on a murder case. Remember Dog Day Afternoon? Well, that was a confined location set within a bank and the street outside. And then there's Murder on the Orient Express, which is about as confined a movie location as they come. Even his lesser known earlier movie, The Hill, which starred Sean Connery, took place entirely in a prison camp during World War II. And number one, Christopher Nolan is obsessed with dead women. If I were Christopher Nolan's wife, Emma Thomas, then I'd be a little worried, as it definitely seems that Nolan loves dead women. Almost every movie he's made is built on the foundations of a woman being murdered or already being dead, with characters dealing with that notion. Dead women drive all of Nolan's movies. In Memento, a man is obsessed with tracking down his wife's murderer. In Insomnia, a man is obsessed with tracking down the murder of a young girl. In The Prestige, a man seeks revenge against a man who he blames for his wife's death. In The Dark Knight, Batman's love interest Rachel is murdered. In Inception, a man is haunted by the death of his wife. In The Dark Knight Rises, Batman has to deal with the repercussions of a dead girl from being, well, still dead. <sighs> so yeah, if Thomas ends up going missing, we all know where to start with the investigations. No, not my house, you fool. Stay away from that cupboard. And that's our list. Got any more film directors with subtle on-screen signatures that we missed? Well, let me know about it in the comments section below. And why not swing by whatculture.com for more news and articles like this every goddamn day. As always, I've been Jules, and you can follow us here on Twitter or me personally at RetroJ with a zero, and I will speak to you soon.